some tests done. Um, we want to keep her in our prayers. She had to be taken in unexpectedly today. Um, not only did I have a chance to speak with her and her daughter, uh, Sinclair, but I had a chance to run by before Bible class tonight. She's looking good. She's feeling a little better. Um, they have her heart rate down. She had an elevated heart rate earlier. Uh, and so we're thankful and we want to remember uh, Sister Stephanie in our prayers on tonight. So let's bow in a word of prayer. Father God, we come in the righteous and holy name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for all blessings of life. We thank you for the church of Christ and the salvation therein, 2 Timothy 2 and 10, Father. We're thankful for the love and the uh, honor that you have bestowed upon us, uh, adopting us as your children, Father, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we are praying tonight for all of the sick and the afflicted, but we pray a special prayer for our dear sister, Stephanie. Father, we're praying that you will touch her body uh, from the crown of her head to the tip of her toes, and that you will touch and heal Stephanie, and that you will return her back home safe and sound, that you will continue to heal Sinclair's body, Father. We thank for the good report we received from Brother Carlos today. Father, we're praying that you will continue to bless him, Father, and continue to make his body cancer-free. Uh, bless Sister Nancy, bless their ministry, uh, that they will be able to serve you, Father, in ministry. Uh, Father, we're praying for all travelers, Lord. We're praying for the bereaved, that you will strengthen and comfort their hearts. Father, we pray now for this class on tonight. Father, you know that I have studied uh, countless hours. You know uh, that I have prayed and I've meditated. I've asked you to lead me and guide me. I've asked you to use me as a vessel of honor for you and never for myself. I've asked you, Father, and I ask you again tonight to defeat me when I am wrong, but give me teaching power when I am right, that I will empower your people through your word, that they might honor you and that they might worship you in spirit and in truth, and that they might walk in the light to have fellowship with you, Father, and with uh, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, Father, we ask you all of these blessings, trusting that you will hear and that you will answer in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it all. Let us all say amen, amen, amen. Sister Tori, it's good to see you out there. I see you, Sister Desiree. I see you've come in. God bless you. Sister Deidre, I see you in on tonight. God bless you. Uh, David and Adriana, good to see you guys out there tonight as well. If there's anyone else I did not see, Sister Connie, it's good to see you uh, on tonight as well. If I miss anyone, God bless you. Charge it to my old head, my old bald head and not to my heart, amen. Uh, but it's good to see everybody here on tonight. We're gonna continue this discussion tonight. We're on lesson two, our hope is in God's presence. To those first time um, attendees tonight, we say God bless you, we love you, we appreciate you being here tonight, Sister Asha, and also we uh, appreciate seeing Julius, uh, one of our sons in the gospel, our brother in Christ, Good to see him on, on the Bible study on tonight as well. Good to see all of you all. I'm excited. Can y'all tell I'm excited? I, I enjoy the word of God, Marcus. I enjoy the study of the word. I enjoy the sharing of the word because it is the word of God that empowers us to please God. And when we please God, we find favor with God. And when we have the favor, good God Almighty, it's already happening. When we have the favor of God, then we can have the peace. Good God Almighty. We can have the peace of God, Sister Satcher. And if we have the peace of God, we will spread the love of God and God will be spread abroad. So it's important for us to learn how to love the word of God. Listen, question number four, we're closing it out. We're closing it out. We thank those of you who gave um, great answers. Uh, why is it important to know nothing can prevent followers of Christ from reaching their destination in heaven as seeing God's face to face? And how does knowing this help you here and now? I started my dissertation last week. I've given you my answer talking about, wow, there is nothing, no thing, that can separate us from God. There is someone who can separate us from God. And Brother Junius, that someone is 
we ourselves. The same individual who enters into a covenant relationship with God is the same individual who can cancel that covenant relationship with God. God has shown us from the beginning of time, all the way back in the Garden of Eden with his first family, Adam and Eve. He created a covenant with Adam and Eve, a covenant of obedience. It was a partnership. I told you last week, you got a part to play. You got some rules to follow. You got a work that you have to do. You got a contract you have to stay faithful to. And when they broke that contract, they died spiritually and were separated from the love and the favor of God. And that has been happening over and over and over again. But how many of you know that every time we see a separation, Brother Marcus, Sister Satcher, Brother John, uh, Jalen, listen, it's not God who's moving, it's man who moves. And the reason man moves is because he changes his mind and decide not to walk in a covenant relationship with God. He said, I'm ever not, I'm, I would never change. He said, I'm the ever same. I'm ever the same God. I change not. God is not a liar. Hello, somebody. Hebrews uh, uh, 6 and, and, and 18, the Bible said by two immutable things, God cannot lie. He cannot lie. God cannot lie. So listen, it, God, it, you can take God at his word. Amen. I said, you can take God at his word. Um, what God says, he means. He means what he says, and he says what he means. Uh, I gave it to you. Let me quote it for you. Hebrews 6 and 18, the Bible says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay a hold upon the hope that is set before us. God gave his word, and then he sealed it with a promise. He gave an oath and he sealed it with a promise. That's why he cannot lie. So then what, what is our conclusion here, Brother Miles? Well, I told you that, well, nobody can separate you. No thing can. You can. You can prevent yourself from receiving your inheritance. If you, if you wasn't here last week, go back and look at it on our Facebook, but I'm going to continue tonight because we got a long road to travel. Come with me to 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter one, verse five through seven, if you're taking notes. And I'm gonna be in the King James Version. First John chapter one, verse five through seven. All right, I'm gonna give some of y'all a little time. I know your Bible's probably sticking because you ain't opening them as, as often as you should. So I'm gonna give you a little grace tonight. First John chapter one, verse five through seven. Here's what the Bible said. Listen, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. Watch this. Heard of who? Heard of God. Watch this. That God is light. Now, what are you dealing with, Brother Mouth? I'm trying to show you that our relationship with God is conditional. That's what I started showing you last week. Our relationship with God, uh, uh, Sister Brianna, is conditional. Sister Johnson is conditional. And I want to show you that again. I want to give you two more scriptures here. First John 1, 5 through 7, then I'll meet you in Revelations 2. But right now, John says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. I like that. I, I, don't, I don't want to stop there and, and park my mule too long. But listen, that's what every gospel preacher ought to be doing, not preaching what they think, not preaching what they feel, not preaching what some seminary have disseminated, not preaching what is popular. But the Bible has always shown that the men of God only gave to the people of God what they had heard from God. Good God Almighty, I'm teaching already. Listen, he says, we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Let me hear you say that tonight. Say it to yourself. God is light. And the Bible says, and in him is no darkness at all. Listen, darkness represents sin. Darkness represents things that are hidden. Darkness represents shadows. It represents something uh, that's uh, evil, That's that's uh, that causes trouble and causes division. That's what darkness separates. Listen, whenever you find yourself in sin, you cannot be walking with God. Whenever you find yourself in a confused state spiritually and don't know what you should be doing, it's because you're in darkness. You're not dwelling in the light. Watch this now. Now, watch this. He says in verse six, 
if we say, if we say that we have fellowship with him, somebody need to put in the chat, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. John say, if we say we have fellowship with him, watch this, watch it, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. We got to come to a point in life to where we are mature enough to be honest with ourselves. Listen, I heard somebody say just the other day, if you be honest with yourself, you can be honest with everybody else. Watch what he says in verse seven. Watch this. Here's that conjunction coming, showing you it's a conditional situation. He says, but if, underline those two terms, but if, two small words, but powerful words, they are dynamic words, all right? They are pivotal words. He says, but if we walk in the light, that's a way of living. That term walk in the light, that refers to your character of lifestyle, your living. If we walk in the light, that includes your studying. If we walk in the light, that includes your prayer life. If we walk in the light, that includes your worship habit. If we walk in the light, that includes your study time. If we walk in the light, that includes your discipleship. He says, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship. Here it is one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us. Perfect present tense, cleanseth us. As long as you're walking in the light, you will have continual covering and cleansing by the blood of Jesus. And it cleanses us. Watch this now, not from some, not from some, but from all sins. Is that in your Bible? Am I close to being right tonight, church? from all sin. Now, let's deal with this but, B-U-T, small word, but powerful word, Brother John. This but here in our text, Sister Miles, is a conjunction. You need to write it down. It's a conjunction. And Brother Marcus, it is a conjunction used, Brother Nick, to introduce a phrase or a clause. Here's the key word, Sister Satcher, contrasting with what has already been mentioned. Let me give it to you again. But this word, B-U-T, is a conjunction used to introduce a phrase or clause contrasting with what has already been mentioned. Here's the question, Brother Miles. What was already mentioned before verse number seven? Because you want to understand the contrast. What was already mentioned? Well, he says, if we say we have fellowship with God, but walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, there, there is no truth in darkness. That's why we have a contrast coming. That's what was pre-mentioned. That was already said. So what is the contrast, Brother Miles? Watch the language of the text. He said, he mentions this next word, if, if, write it down, if, is another conjunction, Deidre, Brother David, Adriana, it's another conjunction. But this term, if, is a conjunction that's introducing, watch this, a conditional clause. It's introducing a conditional clause on the condition or supposition of something in the event of. So what is the contrast being introduced? It's right there in the text, verse seven. The contrast to us saying we have, a, have fellowship with God, the contrast to saying that we walk, that we have fellowship with God, but we're actually walking in the light. The contrast to us lying is if we walk in the light, we then have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleans his, cleanses us from all sin. That is the contrast. So brothers and sisters, this if introduced a conditional clause. 
It's a condition. You just don't give your life to the Lord through baptism and then come up out of the water and keep living, walking, talking, and acting like a sinner, disregarding, disrespecting, dishonoring God's word, dismissing God's word, rejecting God's word because you've grown and got your own home. You pay your own bills, buy your own clothes, buy your own food. Now you done got grown and you want to do what you want to do and think you're going to use God like a genie when you need him, brothers and sisters, the devil is a liar. It is a conditional relationship. Don't let nobody fool you. Once saved, always saved. Once a child of God, always a child of God, but you can lose your inheritance because I'm going to tell you right now, my children will not disrespect me, dishonor me, reject me, dismiss me, and then think they're going to get an inheritance from me when I fall asleep in death. They will always be my children, but you can be an obedient child and a disobedient child. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody need to wave their hand and say, go on and teach it, Brother Miles. Listen, let me tell you something. You will always be a child of God once you have surrendered to God through obedience and baptism and, 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 and through the remission of sin, but you can be lost. I told you, I gave you homework, Luke chapter 15. There was a lost coin, there was a lost sheep, and there was a lost son. The coin still belonged to the woman, but it was lost. The sheep still belonged to the shepherd, but he was lost. The son was still a son, but he was lost. What caused, what caused them to be lost? They were out of the covenant relationship with their owner. Any questions? Before I give you this last verse, any questions, any comments? All right, good. We rolling. Second, uh, Revelation chapter two. Revelation chapter two and verse number ten. I want to show you one more conditional clause. Don't don't fall for that trap. Once saved, always saved. Luke fifteen wouldn't be in the book if that wasn't so. First John one five seven wouldn't be in the book if it wasn't so. All right, there is a condition. You got a role to play. You got some rules to follow. You have a job to do. You have a contract to remain faithful to. All right, there's some conditions. Revelations 2 and 10, King James Version says it this way. Fear none of those things which thou shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. That term 10 days is symbolic. We know that revelations is, is filled with metaphors and symbolism. That term 10 days simply means and suggests to us, Sister Connie, that there will be a period of tribulation in all of our lives. You're going to have a season, Sister Roche, Sister Ann, we're gonna have a season of tribulation. But watch this. He says, but be thou faithful unto death. You're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulation. You're going to have some drama. You're going to have some stuff. He says, here's the condition. But be faithful. You're going to lose loved ones. Be faithful. You're going to have tribulations with your job and your career. What's the condition? Be faithful. Your children uh, will walk away. Be faithful. Your husband, your wife will leave you. Be faithful. You lose your job. Tribulation. Be faithful. Folk will get on your last nerve at church. Don't leave the Lord. Be faithful. Here's the condition. Be thou faithful unto death. Watch it now. And I will give thee a crown of life. Y'all see that? He said, I will give thee a crown of life. How do I obtain? How do I achieve this crown of life? The condition is that I must be faithful. So what's the final point of question number four, Brother Miles? What's the final point? Sensational Saints, the truth 
of the mighty is. That true comfort. Here it is, Sister Noten. Sister Tori. True comfort of our eternal hope. Sister Miles is secured in a focused, committed, covenant, obedient relationship with God our Father. And it's made possible by the shed blood of Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son of God. That's how our true comfort of our eternal hope is made secure. It's through you being obedient and doing your part in the covenant relationship. See, beloved, when you know that you are walking in obedience with God's word, watch this, Jalen, it ought to promote peace and joy. When you're walking in obedience with God's word, it ought to lessen feelings of loss and lavish you with the love of God. When you are in a covenant, obedient relationship with God, it ought to impede your impatience and impregnate you with praise. Good God almighty. When you are in a covenant, obedient relationship with God, it ought to put some clapping in your hands, some stomping in your feet. It ought to dismiss your depression and wind up your worship. When you are in, good God almighty, when you are in a covenant relationship, obedient to God, it ought to mess up your misery and freshen up your faith. It ought to paralyze your problems and saturate you with satisfaction. Sensational saints, the facts and the promises. Can I speak for myself, Nick? Can I speak for myself? The facts and the promises from God about tomorrow, which is heaven, y'all. Sister Mackins, is heaven. When I talk about tomorrow, the facts and promises of tomorrow, I'm talking about heaven, Sister Miles. The facts and the promises from God about tomorrow, my heavenly home, my eternal living, empowers me right now today to live in my temporary today. Now, I don't know who needs to hear that, Sister McCullough, and I don't know uh, who I'm talking to, and maybe it doesn't put you on shouting grounds, but let me tell you, the facts and the promises about up there in heaven and my tomorrow, it, it, listen, understand that there's praises up there, but y'all got to know and believe and understand and be honest with yourself, there's still some pain down here, and so since I'm in my pain down here in my temporary life today, I need something to help me deal with the pain, although I got my mind set on the praises over there, although there's joy, uh, Sister Ann, over there, I'm still digging, dealing with jagged edges of life down here, so I need this, this problem I need the facts to empower me to hold on in my today. Listen, I don't know who needs to hear it, but I know they're singing over there, Sister Connie, but there's still sadness down here. And I need to be empowered to deal with my sadness down here. There's love in heaven, eternal love of God, never fading, never vacillating. But I'm still dealing with liars down here, Sister Tori, and I need to be empowered in my right now today. I know there's a heavenly choir singing up there, but I'm still dealing with haters down here. And Brother Marcus, I need to know that when my earthly life has ended and my work on earth is done, I need to know, Brother Nick, that we have a building of God. A house, good God Almighty, a house not made with hands. Where is it? Where is it, church? Eternal Venus is eternal in the heavens. And I'm glad tonight that my final resting place, my final home is in heaven because when I was here and my wife was still in South Haven, Mississippi, all by herself, someone broke in. Thank God she wasn't there, but they broke in her home. We're not safe down here, Sister Satcher. Put two locks on your front door. A Doberman pigeon in the front yard and a bulldog in the backyard, but some bad mama jama will still come in on you. I wish I had a witness in here. I'm telling you, I'm glad tonight, and I'm on shouting ground if I got to be all by myself, Brother John, that in this life today, in my today, my temporary today, the facts and the promises of God, good God Almighty, is what 
equips me and empowers me to deal with my today because I know what he has promised for my tomorrow. And I'm here to tell you, whoever you are and whoever needs to hear this, don't listen, don't expose your ignorance. Don't expose the fact that you are just saying, you in 1 John 1, you are just saying you a child of God. Don't, don't expose yourself. When you begin to talk crazy and say, well, if God is God, why is he allowing this? If God is God, why did this happen? Listen, God is God, whether, whether evil show up or whether goodness show up, whether you believe it or whether you don't, whether you accept him or whether you don't, God is still sovereign. And he is still God. And don't blame, if you know God, you wouldn't expose yourself as an ignorant individual by trying to blame God for evil things that have, God didn't birth evil into the world. God is God and he cannot lie. He told them, he told them if they sin in that garden, he told them they would die. So now you're going to get big and bad, come back 2,000 years later, you born and you're going to show your ignorance and want to get mad at God because bad things are happening in your life. Your mom and daddy, Eve did that, not God. But watch how faithful God is, Sister Ann. Watch how faithful he is, Sister Mackin, Sister Asha. God is so faithful. And Sister McCollum, he's done it over and over and over and over again. God still stands and he still says, if my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways and call upon me, I will hear and I will answer. God has given us an eternal um, way to get back to him and it's called repentance. And we see that portrait and that theme all the way through the Bible, the, the word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, we see when man repents of his sin and turn back and, and come back into the covenant relationship with God, God forgives him and he gives him his grace all over again. And as long as man follow God and follow the grace of God and the instructions of God, he will have the favor of God. And when the storms of life come, God will speak to your storm. And he's going to either do two things. He will either quiet your storm, watch it now, or either he'll walk with you through the storm. But either way, he makes it all all right. And sometimes it's best for him to take your hand and walk you through the storm because what that does, uh, Sister Venus, is strengthen our faith joy to let us know when the next storm come, he did it before and he can do it again. And then brother Nick, he empowers us to help our next brother, help our next sister. When they try to throw their pity party, and you done already been through the storm, you're able to say, now wait, wait, wait now, wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you what he did for me. <laughs> Great God Almighty. Let me tell you what he did for me. And if he did it for me, and God has no respect of person, he'll do it for you. But what we must understand, First John tells us, we got to make sure we are walking in his will. You don't do what you want to do and then think you're going to tell God what to do. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You have to be in his covenant will. You can't follow the crowd. You can't do what people are doing just because it's popular. Here's the formula. And I gave you this before, but I'm going to give it to you again because it's just good to fit right here. This has never changed. Here's the character of God. This has never changed. And you should have this in your notes. God has always spoken his will to man. From Genesis to Revelation, he speaks his will to man. God expect man to hear. And when man obeys God, he's rewarded with God's favor. 
when man rejects God, the wrath of God comes upon him. And sometimes God leave him to his own self. And he, re he received recompense, payment for his evil deeds. So you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself and, and show your ignorance by accusing God of evil. John just told us that there is no darkness in God. There is no darkness in God. Darkness represents sin. It represents evil. There is no darkness. But Brother Miles, God got the power. He got the power to stop anything. He told you what, you don't tell God what to do. He told you what to do. And he told you to be faithful. He warned you in, in, in Revelations 2 and 10. He warned you that some of his faithful followers are going to have some tribulation. That, that's what proves our faith, beloved. That's what proves our faith. All right, any questions? I covered a lot of ground. Any questions? Any comments? You may not have any questions. You got any comments? Anything you want to add? Any testimony you want to give? Showing the power of God, how he brought you through, how he brought you out. How you trusted him in a circumstance because you knew you already had, you had already tried it. Three. Brother Miles. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting that a lot of times, you know, and look at me personally, that, you know, some of the situations that I believe in, even in my work life or whatever, different things like that, man, that applies to God. And I have to have that, that more, even more confidence. Yes, sir. You know, in the, the promise that, you know, um, I've done my part of it. If I haven't done my part of it, I don't believe in that covenant. I don't believe in in the, but I, I think about uh, a situation at work where they were restructuring and the majority of the people in my department were going to lose their, their jobs. Yes, and, sir. Uh, I, I, I just believed that God was going to take care of me and I kept working. I worked harder after I got the announcement that I did before. I didn't post sure. for a lot of the jobs that other people were trying to get and everything. And they were like, what, well, you know, you don't seem nervous, you know? I'm like, <laughs> man, he he's taking care of me before. I mean, yes. I I just, you know, and, and then I wound up getting, staying in that department. Mm -hmm. And there were people that had been there 20, 25 years mm -hmm. that had to leave and normally a senior seniority is looked at but they didn't look at seniority My in Lord. this situation they looked at how you conducted yourself and mainly how you conducted yourself when they made the announcement yes you know and nothing but god because that's not normally the way that it happens you know but my faith in God helped me. Yes, sir. Help me, you know, and I knew it was nothing, nothing but God, you know, and the supervisor told me, we've been watching, we've been watching how you've been conducting yourself. Mm -hmm. He said, you've been doing more. You actually have been doing other people's work that have checked out, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm not special, you know, in that, that's just, you know, learning from what God has done for me before you know and and then can share it to somebody say hey man look he can he can do it for you he can do it for you you know and 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 I and, and I come in contact with people that went through that same thing and went a different direction and they have been miserable ever since you know have never gotten the right position that you know they can be comfortable in and it started there how they responded to that situation yes sir Great testimony. Great testimony, Doc. Anyone else? Uh, Brother Miles, Sister Nolte. Sister Nolte. Uh, 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 we were on that subject at work uh, last night. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the employees uh, uh, are getting fired. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because of the day performance there on the unit, mm -hmm. you know, and like I was telling Ray, he's one of the nurses, uh, because he kept repeating himself about this uh, counselor. He just couldn't believe it that, you know, he was gone. Uh, they fired him for, you know, that reason. I didn't, I don't want to go into that. But mm -hmm. like I told Ray, he said, I don't know what we're going to do it. You know, he always come down to my desk when he want to hear God's word. Mm -hmm. And like I told him, I said, you know, what I'm going to do is just continue to remain faithful to God, regardless yeah. of what's going on in this unit mm -hmm. or in this world. You know, God never said <laughs> uh, by being faithful to him that we are bored you know, trouble and um, persecution and all of this, you know, you yeah. just have to remain faithful doing mm -hmm. the suffering because God is in control. I kept telling Ray and, uh, and his promise are that we can depend on. Uh, but, you know, I think it was going in one ear and out the other one because he was constantly repeating itself about, you know, uh, I just can't believe that he's mm -hmm. gone, you know, they fired him like that, you know, mm -hmm. so I just kind of listened at him then a little, you know, but I told him, I tell you what then, Ray, I'm going to remain faithful to God, and I'm going to do my work, and I'm going to go beyond 100%, you know, so yes. we were, <laughs> we were on this subject, uh, you know, last night at work, just wanted to share that. Appreciate that, appreciate that, Sister Nolan, thank you. Anyone else? All right, if not, question five, question five. Uh, I trust and pray you all have read uh, question five that you've given it some consideration and some thought. Again, for those who are not used to how we proceed, we only have just a few minutes. We have a few minutes left. Um, those who are not familiar with how we proceed uh, here and how we do things, uh, Brother Miles, uh, taking attendance toll that I simply go down our list for answers if you have nothing to add, that's perfectly fine. We do not look down on you. That is no sweat, no problem. You simply say, Brother Miles, I don't have a comment uh, or I pass uh, and we'll move on to the next person. But the, the reason I do this is so we won't miss anyone who does have something they want to say or something they want to share from their studies or even from something that has been provoked in their spirit by what someone else has shared on tonight. Question number five, question five. How does walking with Jesus throughout the day strengthen your hope? Once again, how does walking with Jesus throughout the day strengthen your hope? Now, let me just give a caveat here and give a clear understanding. Remember now, this hope that, we, that we're referring to is our eternal hope in glory, the eternal hope of eternal salvation, all right, eternal life. How does walking with Jesus, I explained that term earlier. We're talking about a lifestyle. Walking with Jesus is walking in covenant with Jesus now. If we're not talking about pick, picking up this, this thing here and, and just carrying it around with you. No, that's not walking with Jesus. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We ain't talking about you just, you know, you coming in every, every time somebody say, you know, praise the Lord, I'm blessed and highly favored. That doesn't necessarily mean you're walking with Jesus. Walking with Jesus is a term that refers to a lifestyle of a covenant relationship with him, meaning that you are being purposeful. You are being intentional as your former preacher drilled in you, being consistent and, and, and being intentional, all right? That's what walking with Jesus means. And of course, our eternal hope or strength in our hope is talking about eternal glory. So, uh, start now, Brother Marcus. You have anything you want to share? Um, I I, I think of the times if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Oh, look at that! Look, look at you. Listen to you. <laughs> Listen uh, to you. No, <laughs> so I mean, it keeps you ready. I I mean, and the, the the thing about it is, like you said, it's relationship, and you know, think about how you feel when you don't have a strong relationship, and somebody promises you something. Mm -hmm. versus when you do have a strong relationship with that you actively and and intentionally um you know 
uh, strengthen that relationship on a daily basis and actively participated in it, you feel a little bit better about about something that they might promise you versus when you don't have a a, a relationship with somebody, a good relationship with somebody mm -hmm. that promise. So having that relationship daily with 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 God, it just strengthens strengthens you know what he said he's going to do and that i'm in a position to to you know to take advantage of what he's promised mm -hmm. i like that thank you brother marcus god bless you man thank you so so satcher are you unmuted so satcher uh, i just did now <laughs> <laughs> all right and, and I wasn't expected to be coaching on right now either. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It just um it just gives me strength and peace as I go, you know, through my day. Cause you know, things do come up. <clears throat> and um uh, I, I just think about, you know, the joys that I have in knowing. God, mm -hmm. his promises that he has um has given us. And it just helps me to know that it is happening right now, mm -hmm. but it's not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I would get a phone call, I would get a text from somebody, and it just helps me to see the Lord, I Thank you, because I know that it's you that brought this to me to help me have hope and look at things in a totally, totally different way. And mm -hmm. whatever is happening here today, tomorrow on this earth, the suffering of whatever that we have, that I have, I have a loving father that has promised me that if I endure and hold on, then I am going to uh, be rewarded. And I know God has brought me through time and time and time again. And just recently, I was just thinking back about my childhood mm -hmm. from where God has brought me, the things that I have gone through. Mm -hmm. But God has always helped me and brought me through and given me joy. And I really find joy now in knowing and all the um, people that God has connected me to that just brings me joy again and again and again. And just thinking about a certain person at a certain time will help me think, Lord, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So I I can just, you know, walk in confidence and knowing that whatever, whatever it is God brings to me, he's going to bring me through it if I just hold on mm -hmm. and trust him. And there's some dark days. I tell you, sometimes days get dark. But I tell you, I know God, has that shed that light that I need to keep me going. God bless you, Sister Satcher. Thank you so very kindly. Thank you for your answer. Sister Roche. Ah. All right. Thank you, Sister Roche. God bless you. Sister Bobby McCullum. Are you you're muted, Sister McCollum? All right, we'll come back, Sister McCollum, if she if she comes in. Sister Corey Mackins, do you have anything you want to share? No, sir. All right, God bless you. All right, Brother Jarrell. Yes, sir. Um, I feel undefeated uh, when I know that 
I can walk with Jesus. Um, and I mean, we serve a God that's so great. I mean, he said it in Philippians 4, 13, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So not only is he going to guide me through all those processes, he's going to give me everything that I need. Um, he's going to put me in a situation, in a position that is going to be positive and, bene and beneficial. Um, so, uh, I just, I just know that, you know, if I continue to be consistent, I continue to walk in his faith or walk in, walk by faith and not by sight that I will continue to be in his favor. Bless you, my brother. Strong words, a strong word. Thank you, Dre. God bless you, yeah. man. Yeah. Brother Miles. Yeah. I was trying to get my phone unmuted and I could not, yes, I was just talking and I finally found <laughs> out. Oh my goodness. But anyway, I was saying that. You know, I know each day that God walks with me. I talks with him. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know he he's with me, you know, my sisters and brothers calls me and tell me, you know, how I encourage them and, you know, how much I they love me. And, and, and you know, I just know that God is with me each day. And he takes care of me. Now, I'm going to go way back. It won't take me long to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go way back. I was about five years old. I was really a, a little girl. And I remember I used to just pray for my mama because I, I love my mama to death. I, I was just close to my mom. And I would ask God to let, uh, let me uh, take me before he take my mom. Mm. And, and you know, I was just a little girl. I didn't mm. know anything that much about religion. You know, I was I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. But I remember that, that I used to pray so hard for my mom. And um, so when I got older, my, my mom passed away. And, you know, I just I just took it like a champ. I said, you know, mm -hmm. I know he and if he heard me then. Now I'm a member of his body and, and you know, and, and I'm doing, I uh, obey and, you know, doing a thing that is right. And I know he, he looks after me now, mm -hmm. you know, and that just gives me encouragement to know that God is with me. He walking with me daily and he takes care of me. Yes. Yes. God bless you. God bless you, Sister uh, McCollum. I see that. Through your relationship with your brother and sisters, you, you feel the presence of God as they walk yes. in the light with you, and, and it gives you peace and courage. God bless yes, you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Sister uh, Sister McCullum. All right. Uh, our dear Sister Asha is with us tonight. Sister Asha, you have anything you want to share? Yeah, I can just add that I think it shapes my perspective of life. Mm -hmm. um, I recently um, took a course on death and dying and we went over like the biological aspects of it, but also um, thoughts of the afterlife and the spirituality of it. And it was very interesting because I um, studied a couple, um, I had a project where I had to study um, other religions and their um, beliefs on the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And um, the course in general, um, as I have been getting closer to God and, you know, um, my relationship with him is becoming stronger. Mm -hmm. It has been preparing me and helping me to, um, helping me to look at life where like, okay, this is temporary and death is inevitable. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at it as such a doom anymore. Mm -hmm. So it has me looking at, you know, this life as my time to, you know, edify God and help others and just, you know, do my calling while I'm here so that later on, I'm able to, you know, gain that eternal life and I can live with him, you know, in heaven. Well, I tell you, y'all do my heart good. Y'all do my heart good, boy. Y'all y'all on point tonight. Y'all on point. Thank you, Sister Asha. God bless you. I like that, Brother Marcus. It shapes her perspective of life. And anybody that's been sitting <laughs> under my teacher for any amount of time, hear over and over again how I tell you. The, the secret to peace in life, of course, is the relationship with God. But once you're in the relationship with God, you got to put things in perspective according to God. If, if you keep looking at things outside of God's scope and wanting things to be like you want it to be, you will never have peace. You will never have peace. But let me park my mute. It's y'all turn, not mine. All right. right. Sister Youngblood. Uh, yes, um, with my walking with God, it's like, well, let me put it this way. When I first entered the, the 
Church of Christ. And I didn't know all the things that I knew that I'm learning now. Yes. Um, I was in a Baptist church, but I hadn't been for a while. Yes. And so just being and hearing the conversations and being around the ladies and, and hearing the, the teachings has made me stronger and made me more and more willing and more accepted of God's word. Mm -hmm. uh, just um, to be able to um, strengthen myself, my hope and my faith in God has always been there. But I just needed to be strengthened up more and learn more through the real words of God. And I guess I'm not, maybe I'm not putting it right, but I follow um, you. I follow you. I mean, okay. It's because, like, in the church that I came from, it's like we never really got down to studying the Bible deep down, like what we're doing now. Yes. And yes. this is really strengthening me every day and keeping me going and trying to walk constantly and praying that I can be beside God and walk with him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Youngblood. God bless you. Boy, y'all making my heart happy tonight. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Youngblood. All right, we got three more minutes. Uh, I heard somebody was anxious to get in. Was that Jalen? No, that was me, Brother Miles. Who was that? Brother Junius? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Doc. Go right ahead, Doc. Yeah, I and I, I don't remember the name of who said it, but um, the way I've always looked at it is that uh, usually what I've known from my own experience is that I look at it as an alignment scale. So if I'm living in alignment with the principles of God, nine times out of 10, my life is going to go uh, exponentially better. There will be bad times, but that he already told us there was going to be times like that. So I use it as an alignment skill. And then I always look at like, if I'm still alive and still breathing, God still has a purpose for me. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Living in alignment. It helps you to live in alignment and help you to remember purpose that you're here for a purpose god bless you brother julius thank you so yes, much sir. god bless you actually you were next brother julius <laughs> oh see look look at that <laughs> god bless you man thank you so much good to have you here tonight all right yes, brianna sister brianna she's up she brianna is on the board early this morning y'all i mean early today tonight brianna well it's kind of really um what asha was saying it really helps to create a perspective because all the, especially lately with all the things that I've, you know, gone through and, you know, not really suspected or expected to happen. It just it helps me to keep on moving. Like, um, there is still a reason why I'm still here and just really to follow God if I, as long as I'm trying to follow God's path or his word and I'll go down the path that he has for me. I know there will be times, you know, when things are hard, but it just gives me something to look forward to. Like, uh, I know I'm going to get through it just because mm -hmm. it's just being faithful and hopeful. So, mm -hmm. God bless you, Brianna. God bless you, honey. Thank you so much. It helps you to keep moving. And I tell you, we need that in life. Uh, that last little run I gave y'all tonight, you know, um, listen, I, I mean that, you know, there's so much waiting for us over there. But we're in our today. We're in our today. And, and this walking with God in alignment with him, as, as Brother Julia said, uh, it helps us to keep moving. It gives us strength. Someone said it gives us strength, Sister Youngblood. Uh, it gives us peace, Sister McCullum says. Sister Asher, it helps us to uh, put things in perspective of life. That's what it does. So Sasha said it gives us peace, gives us strength. Um, um, and if God brings us to it, he can bring us through it. Brother Marcus said, if you stay ready, <laughs> hallelujah, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> and walking with the Lord helps you to stay ready. That, that's it, y'all. That's all we got tonight is eight o'clock. Uh, but, but look, I, I got my trusty list. Uh, make, sure she, make sure you show up next week. Uh, we're going to start right there. We're going to start right there. Um, think about it. Ponder upon it. How does walking consciously uh, with Jesus through the day strengthen your hope? All right. We're going to begin right there. We're going to pick up right there.
and uh, I got your names down. Uh, we appreciate everyone here tonight, your presence. Uh, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. It is my sincere prayer that something has been said tonight to cause you to realign yourself, uh, to realign yourself with God, to put things in proper perspective and understand that to have that eternal hope of God, it is a condition. You have to do your part to have the favor of God willing in your life. At this time, we're gonna actually prepare your hearts and mind for prayer. After prayer, we ask for you to unmute and share your love and, and speak and have some fellowship after we uh, give the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Father, we submit ourselves to you as we prepare to leave this uh, class tonight. We trust that you will watch over us, protect us from all hurt, harm, danger, death, disease, and unnecessary delays. Touch and heal the sick. Give comfort to the bereaved. Bless the poor and the homeless and the disenfranchised. Provide their every need. Bless our sister Stephanie. Strengthen her and heal her body. Continue to heal sister uh, Sinclair's body. Continue to heal and bless Brother Carlos and Sister Nancy. We're praying for Brother Malik tonight that you will continue to heal his body. Bless his mother, Veronica. Father, we're praying for my dear mother, Dr. Opia Miles, that you will continue to strengthen her, that you will continue to lengthen out the threads of her life, continue to give her peace and comfort. We're praying for the Thomas family and the Donald family, the Cox family, those who immediately tend to her. We ask you to continue to bless them, Father, in every way they stand in need of. Father, we're praying for Path tonight, Path Crisis Center, for victory, for you to have your way. Now, Father, we pray for this word that has gone forth, that it will have a great harvest of understanding and obedience, that you might be glorified, some lost soul might be saved, the saved may be edified, Satan terrified, and the man of God encouraged. When it is yours to call and ours to answer, we ask for a peaceful hour in death, trusting that we shall never die at the hands of man by mechanical failure or accident, but simply sleep away in sweet peace and hear you say well done on the other side. It is in the wonderful, magnificent name of Jesus that we ask these blessings. We all say amen. Amen.